All right, hey, what is up, guys? This is Ivan from BurningBiz.com, and in this tutorial today, we're going to use a couple of different pieces. We're going to use a motor, a geared motor, like we have here, and we're going to use again the L9110 motor driver. And I have a little potentiometer here that I'm going to be able to regulate the speed of the motor with. Uh, but what we're going to do today, we're going to use a speed sensor like this guy right there. And what that's going to do for us, it's going to tell us how many rotation per second this little motor is going at. Um, now this is useful especially for uh, DC motors because DC motors depending on how much uh, current you're giving them, they will go faster or slower. But it's not an exact precise uh, motor like a stepper motor. A stepper motor can be very precise. Um, because it's a number of steps so you can uh, know exactly how much you're making your motor move. DC motors, you know, they tend to drift a little bit so by knowing the speed of the motor you can in your code then uh, regulate the uh, speed based on the number of rotation that it's doing so you know approximately how much it has moved. Now the way we're going to do this today, uh, the connections are not very complicated. We have a potentiometer that's connected to uh, pin A1 so we'll map that value to set the speed of the motor and using the L9110 uh, we'll be able to control the speed of the motor using the potentiometer. The um, little sensor here only needs one pin and that's connected to uh, pin 2 on the UNO and pin, pin 2 is linked to interrupt 0 uh, in the UNO code and that's why we're using pin 2 because we're going to use an interrupt to actually increase the counter of the uh, sense that uh, the sensors detect. Uh, so basically every time the pin, this pin goes high, it means that the beam has been open or blocked. So basically we'll increase a counter and we're going to use another interrupt in a library called timer one, which we're going to start a timer for one second. And once that timer is elapsed, then it's going to call another interrupt and then display on the serial monitor the value of the counter. Now the disc, the encoder disc that's uh, spinning on the motor here has 20 holes in them, in it. Uh, so basically one full rotation will give us 20 pulses on the sensor. So once the timer elapses and we go to the serial monitor to display the information, we're going to take the value of the counter and divide it by 20 because we have 20 holes in our disc. Uh, but if you're using so if you're using your own disk or whatever, just um, you're going to divide the value by the number of holes that are in your encoder disk to get the number of rotation per second. Now you could improve on that. You could use a little LCD display. You could make m many calculations. You know, if you want a set of specific speed of your motor, you could take that value and instead of using potentiometer, you could code that inside the Uno to regulate the speed of the uh, DC motor here. So. Uh, like I always say, if you want to see all the connections, go to BrainyBuzz.com. You'll find this tutorial and the schematics for all, um, for all the connections you see here. We're actually powering the L9110 using a little power supply, 5 volt, 2 amps, uh, because DC motors tend to uh, draw more current than the UNO could provide directly. And the potentiometer is just connected to voltage and ground and the analog to analog one. So you'll see that in our code also. So let's go take a look at the code, get an explanation on that, and then come back, we'll plug it in and play around with it and see the values that we get. So let's go take a look. All right, so here we are in the code. Uh, we're gonna start at the top. Uh, basically we're including the timer one library, as you can see here. Uh, you can find a link to download that library on our website, brainybus.com. At the end of the tutorial, you'll find the uh, link to download the library. And all you need to do basically after that is extract it to your library folder uh, inside your Arduino folder on your computer. And then we're declaring a variable called counter and setting it to zero. This will hold the pulses of the speed sensor. And then we're saying which pin on the L9110 is connected to what. So the B1A is connected to pin 6 and pin 9, the B1B. And here are the two interrupts that we're going to use. One is used for counting the speed sensor. And the other one is done when the timer has elapsed to display the information on the serial monitor. So we'll skip that for now. We'll go a little bit lower. And when we call these interrupts, we'll come back. 
So in the void setup, we're doing the serial begin to enable the serial monitor. Uh, we set the pin mode B1A, B1B to outputs for the uh, controlling the speed of the motor on the L9110. And here we're doing the timer dot, timer one dot initialize with a value of one million, basically. So we're setting the timer for one second. So that sets the timer uh, for a one second interval. And uh, right after that, we're attaching the interrupt, attach interrupt zero, which correspond to pin two on the Uno. And we are saying when the interrupt zero gets a rising signal, meaning the pin on the sensor goes to high, then you're gonna do the interrupt called do count. And if we go back up here, here it is, that's our interrupt do count. So when this gets called, it increases the counter variable plus plus, meaning increasing it by one. So every time the sensor gets blocked and uh, by a hole, uh, by the, the encoder disk, when it hits a hole, then it goes to high, does the interrupt and we're increasing the counter. And let's go back down. And here we're attaching an interrupt to the timer when the timer is elapsed. So one second when the timer is elapsed, we're attaching the interrupt called time ISR, and that's enabling the timer. So we go to up to the interrupt, timer ISR. And the first thing we do when we do that, we detach the interrupt, so basically stopping the timer. Then we're serial printing motor speed, and we're setting a variable called rotation equal to counter divided by 20. We're dividing by 20 because like I said, the little encoder disk that we're using has 20 holes in it. So we want to know the rotation per second. So we're dividing the total value of counter up to that one second by 20. And then we're still printing the rotation value in decimal and rotation per second just to uh, put some text on the serial monitor. Once that is done, we're resetting the counter to zero to start over again, and we're reattaching the interrupt. So we're re-enabling the timer for another second. So it keeps doing that, and when after that, we go to our main loop right here. And the main loop, basically what it does, it takes the pot value variable and puts the analog read one, A1, because that's where our potentiometer is connected, <clears throat> and puts that value in that variable here. And then we do another variable, motor speeds is equal to mapping. So we're mapping, mapping the pot value from zero to 680 to 255, zero. So zero will be 255, 680 would be zero, and it is gonna make the calculation in between. So that will set the speed of a motor as we turn the potentiometer. And to move the motor, we do an analog write of the pin B1A with the value motor speed, so that will set the speed. And we do a digital write of the B1B to one, and one will set the rotation of the motor to clockwise. And if you put it to zero, then it goes the other way. So as you can see by using interrupt, our main loop basically just controls the motor. And when an interrupt happens, would it be the interrupt zero for the, the speed sensor or the timer elapsing calling this interrupt so it does the interrupt, but this keeps going. So by using interrupts, you can make your Uno do other things while you're waiting for an interrupt to happen. So that's, a, that's the whole code. So we're gonna go ahead, compile that, and then upload it to the Uno. And let's go take a look at our breadboard setup and test it out. All right, so we're back to our little test uh, setup here. Uh, I applied power to the L9110 first, and it's uh, receiving 5 volts, and I'm using a little power supply that has 5 volt 2 amps, so we're providing power to this guy first. It's always a good idea to plug in these guys before plugging in the Uno, because if you plug the Uno first, then you plug this, there might be a little bit of surge of current, and you might lose the USB connectivity of your Uno. So it's always a good idea to start these guys first and then plug in the Uno. So the UNO already has the code, and the potentiometer is set to zero right now. So you're going to see on the screen the serial monitor window, and right now it's reading zero rotation per second, which is right. So I'm going to increase, and we're going to see the values being... So basically the way this works, as I increase this, the motor is going to start spinning at a certain speed. The sensor will start counting, 
using an interrupt when it goes high. So when it goes high, it's going to increase by one. And at the same time, like you saw in the code, we're starting a timer for one second. So after one second of counting, the timer will elapse, go inside the other interrupt, and display the value divided by 20. So let's give it a try. So I'm going to start the motor slow at the beginning. There we go, maybe a little bit slower. There we go, one rotation per second. And I'm going to increase it a little bit more. We're up to four, three. And as I go up, and there we go, maximum speed. And bring it back down. And off. So there you go. I mean, by no means these are very super precise. Uh, you have to make sure that this little guy is well aligned so the holes are uh, blocking the actual sensor. So the height and the position of this guy uh, needs to be um, pretty precise for the sensor to actually count properly. But using a little inexpensive speed sensor like this, you can, you know, dial in your DC motors. Uh, using code on the UNO and uh, by using interrupts it enables us to actually read the value of the analog uh, potentiometer to set the speed and using interrupts uh, gives you uh, you can do more than one thing at one time uh, if we were not to use the timer and use a delay instead of one seconds like delay uh, 1000 what that does basically it pauses the code and nothing else is happening until the, the delay is done. So for our uh, purposes using the timer one library is that the timer starts but we can still start we can still do stuff with the UNO while the timer is actually counting down. So there you go guys not too complicated but still you know something that might be useful in one of your project if you're using DC motors or building little robots uh, by knowing the number of revolution uh, per uh, second you can actually dial in the speed of your motors and make it move approximately as much as you want. As a side note, I want to apologize. We haven't done a tutorial in uh, two weeks. This is almost uh, two weeks and a half since we haven't done one. Uh, reason is we've been really busy, like I always say, in our store, BrainyBits.com, uh, to uh, find new products and uh, interesting products that you guys might be interested in. And it takes time uh, to source the products and take the pictures and put them on the website. So we're trying to do our best and providing tutorials uh, for beginners uh, to get people interested in that stuff and actually uh, start building their own, their, their own things. Sometimes we get comments that our tutorials are simple and they could be improved and that's exactly uh, what we want. We just want to do an introduction, show you guys how to get it working and once you got it working then you create your own code, you make it better and um, also the forum at Brainy Bits will be open this week and the big reason that we want to open the forum is first of all to have one place where you guys can have questions ask questions about all these things and we can respond a lot, uh, respond a lot easier if uh, your comments are in one place uh, of course we'll always look at the we will always look at the YouTube comment section and if you have questions you can uh, post them below uh, but as we open the forum, we hope you guys will come to the forum and ask your questions there. And also we'll have a place for you, um, for you guys to post your own projects that you are working on. And uh, try to build a little, a little community so you guys can help each other out. And uh, we'll be very interested in seeing what you guys come up with. So that's it for today. Um, I, hope, I hope this helps. And until next time, my name is Ivan. And I hope to catch you guys real soon. Take care.